After studying this module, you shall be able to know about the role and significance of public expenditure, learn about how public expenditures are classified, understand the principles or canons of public expenditure, assess the factors affecting public expenditure, analyze the impact of public expenditure, and analyze the suggestions for reducing public expenditure. Public expenditure refers to government spending to satisfy the collective social wants of the people. It is incurred by the central, state and local governments of the country. In a democratic society, public expenditure is an expression of people's will managed through political parties and institutions. At the same time, public expenditure is characterized by a high degree of inertia and law dependency which does not allow for the reflection of the will of the current majority. Public expenditures refers to spending done for the maintenance of the government, internal and external security, and for the promotion of socio-economic welfare of the people. The government expenditures mainly consist of expenditures on general, social, and economic services. According to Adam Smith in The Wealth of Nations, the government should restrict their activities to defense against foreign aggression, maintenance of internal peace and order along with public development work. All other functions besides these were to be considered beyond the scope of the state and expenditure on them would be treated as unjust and wasteful. However, over the years, there has been a growing expansion in the functions of government which has resulted in phenomenal increase in public expenditure. The size of public expenditure was very small throughout the 19th century as most governments followed laissez-faire economic policies and their functions were only restricted to defending against aggression and maintaining law and order. In the early 20th century, John Maynard Keynes advocated the role of public expenditure in the determination of level of income and its distribution. In developing countries, public expenditure policy not only accelerates economic growth and promotes employment opportunities, but also plays a useful role in reducing poverty and inequalities in income distribution. In developing countries, economic development is hindered due to the deficiency of capital and infrastructure. Economic and social overheads, such as roads and railways, irrigation and power projects, hospitals, and technical institutions are essential for the speeding up of economic development. In poor economies, capital investment for such overheads cannot be sufficiently provided by private sources. So, public expenditure has to play a significant role in building up the economic and social overheads. Government needs to incur expenditure in the agricultural sector, on irrigation and power, seed farms, fertilizer factories, warehouses, etc., and in the industrial sector by setting up public enterprises like steel plants, heavy electrical, heavy engineering, machine making factories, etc. Public expenditure also has to play a pivotal role in the exploration and development of mineral resources such as petroleum, coal, metals, etc. The central government gives grants to state governments and the state governments to local governments to induce them to incur desirable expenditure for meeting the objective of economic development. Subsidies also have to be given to encourage the production of certain goods, especially for export, to earn much needed foreign exchange. Nature of public expenditure. Public expenditure helps in the creation of current effective demand, generating a coordinated impulse in the economy, which can be used for economic stabilization, business cycle inversion, and growth purposes, increasing the public endowment of goods for all in the economy and giving rise to positive externalities to economy and society by capital formation. Public expenditure is mainly financed through taxes, public debt, and international aid. 
Public expenditure is determined by the political will of the leading forces in the state, their priorities, their desired state model, and their interpretation of the current economic and political phase. Bureaucracy may play an important decision role for the actual expenditure. There are three general models of state governments to which public expenditure corresponds. One, the minimal state, two, the welfare state, and three, the developmental state. Let us discuss these models individually. The minimal state, where only law and order, foreign policy, and some other administrative functions are carried out by the state, relying on private initiative for all others. The welfare state, where the state cares about the people's well-being directly, also through expenditure in education, health, support for the poor, the old, and the disadvantaged. The developmental state, where the state takes the responsibility of fostering economic development, also through expenditure in infrastructure, support for private firms, innovation, export, and production. Both the welfare and developmental state include the items of the minimal state. Military expenditure and special policies are common traits of the three models, maybe in varying proportions of public expenditure. Being a component of GDP, public expenditure has an immediate impact on it. An increase of public expenditure raises GDP by the same amount, other things being equal. Moreover, since income is an important determinant of consumption, an increase of income will be followed by a rise in consumption. The full extent of this mechanism will depend, however, on the reactions of the other economic agents. Firms have to decide whether to increase production or prices in response to increase in aggregate demand. However, if consumers interpret the increase in public expenditure as a fall in their disposable income, that is, after-tax income, consumption may fall accordingly. At the microeconomic level, public expenditure when directed to the provision of consumer goods acts to substitute individuals' expenditure as with the case of free medicines. But when directed to provision of social activities like education, public expenditure may trigger a further consumption expenditure like the purchase of books and uniforms. At the macro level, public expenditure is considered to crowd out private investment, possibly through an interest rate increase. This behavior in a floating exchange rate regime can trigger currency appreciation, thereby displacing exports as well. Considering business cycles during recessions, as tax revenue tends to fall, some governments react by reducing public expenditure and freezing employment and wages in the public sector. Others decide to spend more to stimulate the economy. Governments deciding to reduce public expenditure risk the worsening of GDP dynamics and thus engendering a vicious cycle which can be broken only by international trade dynamics, financial inflows or other variables. Governments reacting by spending more would provoke a deep public deficit waiting for GDP rebound and possibly the introduction of new taxes. A major part of public expenditure which is misused in rent-seeking behavior, corruption and purposeless purchases by its very nature can alter the rules of the game in markets, firms and income distribution as it distorts the functioning of an economy. Let us discuss classification of public expenditure. Every year, the government prepares estimates of expenditures based on projections and or expenditures incurred in the past. This is then presented for parliamentary approval under Article 112 of the Indian Constitution in the form of a budget document. The budget document includes information about expenses under various categories for better analysis, financial accounting, and management purposes. The central government 
had adopted a new classification of public expenditures from the 1987-88 budget. Under this new classification, all public expenditures are classified into plan expenditures and non-plan expenditures. Plan expenditures comprise all the expenditures of the government which are included in the central plan. The expenditures related to new projects and programs become plan expenditures during the period of a five-year plan. Non-plan expenditures are committed expenditures on completed schemes of earlier plans and the interest on borrowings. Plan and non-plan expenditures are further subdivided into revenue expenditures and capital expenditures. Revenue expenditures relate to the day-to-day -day running expenses of the government and consist of interest payments, defense revenue expenditure, subsidies on food, fertilizers, export promotion and others, debt relief to farmers, postal deficit, police, pensions and other general services like organs of state, tax collection, external affairs, etc. Capital expenditures are those expenditures that lead to a creation of financial or physical assets or reduction in recurring financial liabilities. They include capital outlays, loans to states and union territories for financing plan projects, loans to foreign governments and loans to public enterprises. Another classification of government expenditures is based on economic growth. On this basis, government expenditures are divided into development expenditures and non-development expenditures. Development expenditures include all items of expenditures that directly promote economic development and social welfare. They include spending on economic services, agriculture, industry, energy, communication, transport, science, technology and environment and social services on education, health, employment, nutrition, housing and others. Non-development expenditures include expenditures relating to the general services provided by the government such as preservation of law and order, defense of the country and the maintenance of the administrative departments of the government. Expenditures by the government on social and economic services are crucial for fulfilling the basic needs of people in developing countries. However, the share of the center's expenditures on social services is low. Given the division of responsibilities between the center and the states in India, or an average about 85% of the spending in social services in India is undertaken by the state governments. It is the responsibility of the states rather than the center to provide social services that matter more for human development. Discuss the principles of public expenditure. Canon of growth. Public expenditure should stimulate economic production and reduce the inequalities and poverty. Canon of social welfare. Public expenditure should aim at providing maximum social benefit to the whole society. Canon of prior permission. Public expenditure should be incurred only after getting prior sanction from a competent authority to ensure optimum utilization and to avoid misappropriation. Canon of economy. Government money should be spent in a way to ensure minimum wastage to get maximum benefits. Canon of elasticity. Public expenditure should be fairly elastic to reflect its utilization based on situational requirements. In case of inflation, it may be decreased and in case of deflation, it may be increased without disturbance. Canon of equitable distribution. Public expenditure should encourage equitable distribution of income and wealth in an economy by creating employment opportunities and reducing inter-regional imbalances, the government can ensure balanced growth. Canon of balanced budget. The government must work towards ensuring that its public expenditures are matched 
by its revenues to avoid deficits and debt burdens. Now let us discuss some of the issues regarding public expenditure and the factors responsible for increase in public expenditure. Let us discuss the first factor, which is provision of welfare activities. The government plays the role of a provider of basic necessities and social welfare benefits to the weaker and dependent population of the country. To ensure basic necessities like food, shelter, clothing, health and education are provided to the masses, the government needs to engage in schemes like midday meals, cheap housing and medical facilities, installation and maintenance of basic public goods like transportation and power. Increase in administrative expenditure. To maintain economic stability, peace, security and democracy, the government needs to spend money. Increasing population pressure. Most developing countries are in the second stage of demographic transition where birth rate is still very high. To provide the basic necessities of life to this increasing population, the governments have to spend huge amounts of money. Development of backward areas. To meet its objective of reduction in inter-regional disparities, the government needs to develop its neglected areas. There is a need for upliftment of the backward regions, investment climate, building of social overheads and enhancing the productive capacity of the people. Inflationary pressures. In the developing countries, as the rate of inflation is very high, so the cost of provision of public services is also increasing. This adds a burden on the government as its revenue generation capacity is low. Increasing defense expenditure. Though expenditure on defense is considered to be a regrettable necessity to prepare the country for war or for its prevention, modernization of defense equipment becomes essential. This factor has grown over the years due to animosity among nations and increase in terrorist activities. Dynamic global economic environment. Global environmental factors like import and export restrictions international political changes and growing need to integrate with the rest of the world has been instrumental in increasing the role of the government. To attract foreign direct investment under its objective of globalization, the government has to increase its public expenditure to provide infrastructural facilities of world standards. Make in India is an international marketing campaign slogan coined by the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, on 25th September 2014 to attract businesses from around the world to invest and manufacture in India. The campaign has been concentrated to fulfill the purpose of job creation. Enforcement to secondary and tertiary sector, boosting the national economy, converting India to self-reliant country and to give the Indian economy global recognition. The Make in India also attempts to enforce the inflow of FDI in the country and improve services by partial privatization of loss-making government firms. The campaign is completely under control of the central government of India. The major objective behind Make in India initiative is to focus upon heavy industries and public enterprises while generating employment, empowering secondary and tertiary sector and utilizing the human resource present in India. The highlights and purpose of Make in India includes making India a manufacturing hub and economic transformation in India while eliminating the unnecessary laws and regulations making bureaucratic process easier and shorter. The government emphasized upon the framework which include the time bound project clearance through a single online portal which will be further aided by the eight members team dedicated to answering investors queries within 48 hours and addressing key issues including labor laws, skill development and infrastructure. Let us now study the effects of public expenditure. Effect on production. In an economy, if the private investment expenditure is not enough in generating national income at its optimal level, 
the government needs to fill up the gap between actual and full employment levels by investing in public works programs. Public expenditure acts as an effective instrument to encourage investment in industries. The government may start public sector enterprises or provide benefits like subsidies, tax benefits to existing industries. It can also encourage new investment in different sectors. Encourages an economy's productive capacity by creating employment opportunities. Expenditures incurred on education and health increase productivity and thereby the incomes of the people. The increase in income encourages saving, which in turn has a positive effect on the economy's ability to work, save and invest. With increasing domestic savings resulting in investment and capital formation, the rate of economic growth and development also rises. Effect on consumption As public expenditure allows for redistribution of income in favor of the poor, it improves the capacity of the poor to consume. An increase in public expenditure promotes consumption or increase in aggregate demand and thereby other economic activities. The government expenditure on welfare programs like free education, housing and health care improves the standard of living of the poor people. It also enhances their capacity to consume and save. Effect on distribution With public expenditure, the government aims at maximizing social benefit and minimization of income inequality. The government collects excess income of the rich through income tax and sales tax on luxuries. Through taxation, funds are mobilized and directed towards welfare programs to assist the poorer and weaker sections. Expenditure on social security benefits and subsidies to the poor are aimed at increasing their real income and purchasing power. By increasing public expenditure on education, communication and health, a positive impact can be generated on productivity capacity of the weaker sections of society, thereby increasing their incomes. Effect on level of income and employment According to Keynes, during periods of depression, governments can remove widespread unemployment and the slowdown in growth rates by encouraging public works. Using the multiplier effect, he explains the link between the increase in public expenditure, income and employment. Suggestions for reducing public expenditure With a focus on transparency in fiscal operations, the government needs to introduce financial and operational reforms to remove the structural bottlenecks and increase the growth rate. There is a need to reduce revenue expenditures and increase the growth rate of capital expenditures. There should be better targeting of social expenditures to achieve fiscal consolidation. While adequate provisions should be made for essential social sectors such as education, care should be taken to avoid non-priority expenditures. For adequate distribution of essential goods, the public distribution should be strengthened. Emphasis should be laid on reducing subsidies, especially to energy sector as these are quite high and increase the burden of budget deficits. By improving the efficiency and management of public sector enterprises and administrative departments, revenues can be generated which can then be reinvested in development of other sectors. Provision should be made to reduce overstaffing and sickness in various departments and industries. The optimum utilization of funds and resources can be ensured by appointing special monitoring committees. Let us now summarize what you have learned in this module. Public expenditure refers to spending incurred by public authorities like center, state and local governments to satisfy the collective social wants of the people. As economies experience tremendous growth in public expenditure, it is essential to formulate judicial public expenditure policies so as to attain the objectives of income generation and its equitable distribution, employment and sustainable growth. There are three general models of state governments to which expenditure corresponds. 
1 the minimal state, 2 the developmental state, 3 the welfare state. Being a component of GDP, public expenditure has an immediate impact on it. An increase of public expenditure raises GDP by the same amount, other things being equal. With a focus on transparency in fiscal operations, the government needs to introduce financial and operational reforms to remove the structural bottlenecks and increase the growth rate.